When I started photographing a lot, I didn't really have a specific aim. I really just wanted to be a photographer. But really, if you want to pursue it as a career, you need to start building the foundations and building blocks to help make it a career. One of those really important things is learning how to make photo books. I've spent the last five years shooting a lot of street photography and a lot of protests. And I didn't really have a proper objective while shooting these things. I knew that they would be a great body of work, but I didn't really have anything to put them into. Then over the last few months, I decided I really want to put together a photo book. And initially I was like, oh, I just want to put everything that I've done into this photo book. And you can't really do that. It's really about trying to develop a theme or find a theme and put things together around that. So a lot of my photography being about protest in the last few years and obviously just day to day life, it became more apparent to me that there was a sort of story of the last five years in the UK and how things are pretty much falling apart. I wanted to put that all together as a photo book project. So I didn't really know where to start in terms of really putting the work in and making a good photo book. And I don't think I've made the best photo book, but I do think I've made the foundations for my next one to be really good. But I took a course uh, by Gregory Halpern, which is on Magnum Photos, which is really worth looking at, especially if you're into documentary photography. And in that, he described his process, and that really helped me to figure out how I was going to put this project together. First of all, obviously, you've actually got to shoot the project. Now, it doesn't have to be such a long-term project like mine was. It could literally be a location that you're in for a month or so. It could be based around, very loosely around just street photography, or it could be a very loose theme and your photo book takes people through a sort of feeling and a story on that theme. Not necessarily with any words whatsoever, although it can be, um, but yeah, you've got to do the project. And I think it's a good thing to start to have projects in mind when you do start shooting. So if you are thinking, I want this to be a book potentially in a year's time, then at least if you have that in your mind, then it can start to inform the sorts of pictures that you're taking. You think, oh, that would look really good with this, you know? Once you feel like you've got your work together and a project together, this may be an archival project that you shot years ago, but you think, you know what? I just want to do a, do a book to learn and to progress, you know, so that next time I make a book that it'll be really good and I'll know the process and it'll be quicker and easier. I would suggest that you do do that because it's not necessarily about making money, it's about learning and progressing and then maybe in the future you will make some money. But if you don't do the hard parts now, if you don't put the time in, put the effort in, then you won't be able to get to the point where your book is actually something that's, you know, wow, that was amazing. So as I was looking at my ridiculously big body of work, to be honest, I've got like way over 5,000 film photos on my um, computer and on hard drive. And obviously initially I was like, I just want to make a book. I don't really know what about. And then as I was working through, I was like, you know, I could potentially build this into a story of the last sort of five years of like a spiraling UK and how it's just falling apart. As I was saying, I don't think that this is gonna be my best ever book. And that's like such an important thing to keep in mind. When you're doing this, these sorts of projects, you don't need to be like, oh, you know, I need this to be the best thing ever and I need to sell, you know, a ton of them. I've only made a small order at the moment because I would rather err on the side of caution, not be stuck with a load of books because this is a learning thing for me. I would want it to be a great experience for people looking at the books, but I know in the future I'll make much better work and continue to make better work because of this learning phase. 
So I moved files from my hard drive and put them all into a new file that was sort of possible book photos. So there's like a few hundred photos in there that I can then whittle down again to be the ones that I actually want in the book. And hopefully they you know, make sense in the context of the book. It can be really hard to whittle things down. And what I would say, and what is really hard, is you don't necessarily want like, this isn't like a best of book, you know, yes, there'll be some photos in there that like, I think, oh, these are some of my favorite photos, but it's not like about putting all your bangers in the book. It's about trying to build a book that makes sense. It doesn't necessarily have to be like all the best photographs. It could be that these two photographs next to one another raise a question in your head. But if they were, if it was two of the best photographs, you'd just be like, oh, these are two great photographs. Whereas two photographs together that aren't necessarily like the most amazing photographs, but they pose a question or make you feel a certain emotion because they're next to one another. And in order to see them next to one another and understand whether I wanted to put these pictures next to one another in a book, I printed all of these photographs off. So I think it was about 200 photos. I printed them off. What I did was almost certainly the dumbest way of doing things, but it seems to have worked for me. I basically just planted each photo into um, a Photoshop file and then made them really small. And then I would just print each of these files. What that resulted in though, was some really low quality prints that for some reason just don't look very good. That didn't really matter because I knew what all these photographs looked like. So just seeing them next to one another was really good for me to just understand like, right, this on top of this looks really good. This next to this looks really good. And you just play around moving these photographs from next to one another and just seeing what works next to what. And this helps you to start to create the story Then I started to put it together on InDesign. This can seem really complicated and scary, but you just need to download InDesign and pretty much sort of just follow what I'm showing you here. Things will vary, but there's loads of uh, ways to find out on Google and on YouTube about what to do on InDesign. What I would say is just make sure when you use your particular printers, you know what bleed you have because the bleed changes depending on which printer you're going to. I'm just gonna do this as a width of 210 mil by 210 mil. Just making 22 pages because I can't be bothered to do anything else. Um, and you see here, this says bleed and slug bleed you put in three mil and it should go three mil all the way around so each of these should auto fill as three mil for us it's three mil for another company it might be something different so if we open that up you've got like your front page and it's showing single pages at the moment but what i'm going to do is press facing pages and it'll show the sort of how it would actually look inside the book. You can see the red line, that's your three, three mil bleed. This is your front page. So on the side, you've got your text. So you could put like, Max's cool book. Of course, you could put whatever else that you wanna put on there. So the way I would put a picture into this would be by using this frame tool, as you can see here, it's like a rectangle with a sort of cross in the middle. And you can make this any size you want, just sort of drag it and put it in there. And then you won't be able to see, to see my files, but I'll drop a photo into that. So I'm gonna pick it up a photographs from my files, drag it into InDesign and drop it into this, okay? And now it looks all crazy. So you right click, go to fitting, fill frame proportionally and it's filling the frame, frame proportionally <clears throat> what you can do is go on the selection tool click on it and this circle in the middle if you 
grab it in the circle in the middle, then you can like place where you actually want your photograph in this um, sort of frame thing. The book doesn't have to be filled with just photographs. You can put a text wherever you want. You can fill the pages with a different color if you like. But these are pretty much the basics of InDesign. It's not that hard to use. If you want to um, see things without any of the lines on, then press W and you'll be able to see it as if it is a normal book. Those are pretty much the basics. So if you want to make a book or a zine, it's not that hard. Just get going and just get. So I put together a lot of different versions of this book on InDesign. And sometimes it was a little bit stressful. And sometimes you think oh, this, you know, I'm putting a lot of work in, probably not really going to get a ton of money back. And like, is it worth it? The truth is, it's an important part of a photographic journey. If you're going to try to become a photographer and make a career and things like that, then learning to make books and learning what you enjoy making books about is a really, really big thing to do. When I first made this book, it was actually uh, glossy like this. And I thought, do you know what? It just felt a little bit cheap. I didn't really like the way it looks and you can sort of see this part of the paper is sort of curling over. So luckily I'd bought just one as like a review and I was like, I wanna see what's wrong with it. I'd made like a, smell, a spelling mistake and like the like I say, the, the pages just didn't, just felt a bit off and the color was a bit off. I think I'd um, exported it in RGB rather than CMYK. Some places want you to do it in CMYK, some want you to do it in RGB, so you've gotta be careful. Make sure that you export your, um, your thing properly. So, a massive thing was being prepared to get a preview of the book and see that I've made some mistakes here, got some feedback off some people that I wanted to get feedback from and then made up for those mistakes. So I've ended up with this version of the book, which is made with natural paper rather than gloss. So the texture is, in my opinion, much better all of the color seems to make more sense now as well. So here, I just think that the reds just are normal now, like all the skin tones are normal. Whereas in the previous version, everything just looked off. So this is what I've ended up with. And I'm really pleased with it. I'm really pleased with the way it looks and feels. Like I said, I don't think that this is like the best book ever, but for me personally, this is far better than anything that I've made before. So I'm gonna try my best to get this book into a few local shops, maybe a few places in uh, Manchester and places like that. Mine is also on sale right now. You can get the pre-order version, so that would be amazing if anyone wants to pick this up. I really hope that this pushes you to make your first photo book or make your next photo book. And just keep in mind, it's all about progression. It's all about getting better. And it's all about getting better results each time we do things. And enjoying yourself as well, because if you're not enjoying yourself, I think you're doing something wrong. So take it easy. If you need any more tips, I hope I didn't really leave anything too important out. Um, but you can definitely find everything online. Putting together a book like this is not too hard, but taking the time with it and being patient can be hard. So you can grab So Far So Good, probably in the link below. Thank you very much and I love you.